Uh, welcome to the Dicto Collections track. Uh, this track is facilitated by my colleague Larry, who is a resource sharing librarian at Stanford University and myself. I head the Library and Documentation Center at Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Access Authority of Uganda. Uh, today is our final, our third and final session. The recordings for the previous sessions are available. You can be able to access them from the conference website. Uh, we are especially excited about the projects in this track uh, because as we are all aware, digital collections are more important than ever in our current environment. Uh, they make glam institutions more accessible to a broader audience. And also uh, linked data is crucial for making these connections within and across collections. But uh, sometimes this can bring challenges of its own uh, when working with heterogeneous sets of metadata. Uh, discover the workflows, tools, and models that the project in this track have used to successfully create and manage linked data and also improve discovery in um, digital collections. Uh, on, the, on, on our screen, you will find the full conference schedule, uh, a link to the conference website, and also the social media platforms. We have the Twitter, we have the Slack invite, and also we are following the, uh, the LD4P community participation guidelines, which are also linked. You can click on the link to access them. At uh, this juncture, I would like to invite Larry to introduce our next speaker, who's going to share with us a few words. Thank you. Thanks so much, Winnie. Uh, we're delighted today to have Dr. Vineet Kumar, who is an assistant professor at the Department of Library and Information Science. Uh, Baba Saheb Bimrao Ambedkar University, a central university in Lucknow, India. He holds his PhD degree in the area of linked data application and library online services. He is having more than nine years of experience in teaching and research of library and information science at DRTC, uh, Bundelkhand University, and the Central University of Gujarat, India. He has 20 research publications in international journals and conferences and has successfully guided students leading to the Masters of Philosophy uh, LIS degree and guiding a few candidates for PhD degrees too. His research interests are library online services, open data research methods, and digital libraries. He is the convener of departmental IQAC of the Departmental Research Committee. He is enthusiastic about implementing open source software in Indian libraries. Welcome, Vineet. Thank you, Hilary, for this uh, introduction. Shall I start? Am I audible? I is the screen visible to you? Yes, looks good. Okay. Okay. So, so hello, friends. Uh, the topic for my talk is uh, content enrichment of institutional repository records by consuming linked data. So, uh, I'll start with a small introduction. So what are the aims behind the linked data that uh, I understood in this presentation and as well this, in this seminar, the workshop, in the seminar that is going on? So the uh, basic aim is that is choosing a standard representation of data stored at different places. As we all know, that data is scattered at different uh, places in silos, and uh, linked data aims to bring all those data at a single place. And this is done by interlinking uh, not only just the documents that we used to do earlier uh, in the uh, www, but also the data that is embedded inside the documents. And this interlinked data can be shared, searched, browsed by both human as well as applications. That is also another benefit that we are going to have. And uh, in the end, it is aiming for developing a set of best practices. So basically, linked data, if we follow all the linked data principles, all the five star uh, to the data, 
so that that comes under the aspect some success stories that we have seen like google rich impacts we have seen in the uh, information retrieval through google knowledge graph we have seen facebook open graph protocol wiki data big project that is going on and it's a very nice uh, initiative and uh, highly a, a grand example of linked data success we can say dvpedia a knowledge base and several other success stories are there and uh, what are what linked data is uh, uh, for libraries so how libraries can uh, implement uh, linked data that we are going to discuss in this some of the efforts that libraries have done uh, in this regard like for example library of congress has uh, released their the subject heading list and uh, we have as linked data dv.info as is also available as linked data oclc world has uh, has implemented uh, linked data and all the records data are available as linked data and similarly some initiatives like bit and is also going on europeana has a very good data data model and framework that follows linked data principles so what roles libraries can play uh, as a libraries we can publish bibliographic data as linked data as uh, for example uh, wildcat is doing we can develop ontologies for better knowledge discovery uh, we can uh, have uh, consume the uh, linked data and uh, create uh, enrichment of records that i'm going to discuss today one prototype that we have developed and we can develop new interfaces to already existing collections so enrichment of institutional repository records a prototype that i'm going to dis discuss In this prototype we have developed to demonstrate the enrichment of records of an institutional repository by making customizations in the famous in, uh, institutional repository suite e space and the content uh, basically the content that we are uh, using uh, in this is uh, brought by consuming linked open data set queried using sparkle and the content obtained is uh, contextually presented to the user at the record display page of the institutional repository in, in this prototype we have implemented only abstract and related terms from dbpedia knowledge base and displayed it to the users although we can have take several other uh, info uh, data and display it to them so coming to the content enrichment of records content enriched metadata of bibliographic records are helpful for the discoverability identification and selection of relevant resources available in a collection it enhances the retrievability of items in a collection because we have more data now and if we go by famous uh, uh, calgagno report uh, that says that content enrichment improves the user's ability to locate and evaluate specific titles of interest enhances the precision of resource sharing and improves access to underutilized portions portions of the collection so these are some of the benefits that are available if we do the content content enrichment of records so the, the amount of information that can be placed within the record structure is limited to the available information in the internal database of records so right now what we are doing that whatever uh, internal database or internal uh, database of records whatever the information we have that is only being displayed to the user at the record display page but the conceptually related information such as uh, places mentioned in the title or the subject of the document can be semantically linked to disparate and distributed destinations over the web and eventually the users may benefit with richer data collections and new search possibilities uh, so thus the enrichment will further establish inherent relationships between media metadata and external information sources so this is the one model that uh, that we have followed and uh, the this model in this we have just following this part so this is the user interface of any library online page so in the uh, in the web 2.0 parlance we could use some rss and xml feeds or some using some rest based api we can fetch the content and display it to the user in the linked data context we can have a knowledge base uh, we can query the knowledge base using sparkle queries and the retrieved content can be displayed to the user at the record display page although uh, the model suggests that we can also locally store uh, 
this prototype what we have developed here at present uh, does the on the fly enrichment means at the time the page loads the 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 in the background the query is sent to the dbpedia server knowledge base server and the retrieved fetched content is displayed to the user but we can store the content as, as a local drupal store also as uh, dbpedia dumps and other linked open data sets are available these days so we can store it in a rdf server or a local triple stores and then we can fetch the uh, re relevant information directly from this server. so what are the decisions that we have taken for uh, development of this prototype we have used this case as institutional repository software this is a famous uh, software uh, most of maximum number of installations for institutional repositories in all over the world that is from this case and second is uh, ecm software and then we have for the knowledge base we have used dbpedia because of its characteristics such as varied coverage of domains community recognized uh, it is highly recognized because the content is brought from wikipedia automatized mechanization of updates if any update is made in the wikipedia that uh, that is directly brought to dbpedia uh, like that and in dbpedia we have we have used two of its services one is that is the lookup index we have used to fetch the URIs for the topics that are uh, relevant for the particular uh, item. And then uh, using that URI, we have uh, uh, query the Sparkle endpoint of Wikipedia. So the workflow for the prototype is that during the submission workflow, at the time the author or the submitter submits, the DSpace submitter is presented with an autocomplete field suggesting the topics as from Wikipedia as auto suggestion. So here we are using Wikipedia lookup and we are fetching the topics as the user uh, starts typing the characters automatically that is fetched from Wikipedia. The topics are fetched and they are presented to the user and the user selects the submitter selects the appropriate topic based on the labels from the autocomplete field. Once the topic is selected, the application then queries the Wikipedia ID or the URI of the selected label and stores the identifier as a value of a metadata element that is defined in the underlying <laughs> meta underlying metadata model of the DSpace software. And the identifier stored in the previous step is later used to query the Wikipedia Sparkle endpoint for a language specific abstract and related keywords. So for this, we have used only the English language uh, specific abstract. And when user opens the record display page of the item, the retrieved abstract and related keywords are displayed to the user along with the local metadata. So along with the local metadata that is stored in the database, apart from that, the retrieved abstract and related keywords are displayed. So this is one screenshot for the uh, submitter when uh, he or she starts typing, the system suggests the topics related, relevant to the particular uh, query that the user is typing. And then here user selects the particular uh, concept which is relevant. And then this is the record display page of the uh, software. Here the title author, these part are, this, this, these metadata are actually stored locally. And this part is actually brought in from the DBPDS server. And here you see the, uh, this abstract is like for example somebody wants to read in detail about some of the concepts or keywords which are mentioned here then they can read about this and this is basically from the dvp gap and and uh, also it brings uh, related terms uh, such as for example in this case mood disorder bipolar spectrum schizophrenia and broader terms also so if and these all are clickable so if somebody wants to search the institutional repository using these words also so these, uh, they, if they click on it, uh, a new query will be run on the institutional repository data. So this is one of the aspects of this prototype that it suggests the uncommon terms or the terms which might not be, uh, user might not be aware, which was not there earlier in the local metadata. Like for example, if you see here in the keywords, uh, the only cannabis work. So the key uh, narrow related terms, and one broader term is suggested by the system to the user and they can click uh, on these and they, they can make search on the database institution report using these uh, keywords. So like uh, these, this is the point that I wanted to 
pension related terms also are available which can be uh, set by user which is are suitable and these terms were earlier not available so this is how the particular system is system works and how we have configured it and implemented we customized the default dublin core metadata schema to add another element to store the uri of the config since we have to store the uri at the at the time of submitter when the submitter selects the topic so for storing that uri we have created one metadata field inside the dublin core metadata schema of the display software and then uh, we created uh, the uh, user interface uh, some customizations we made to the submission workflow by editing the input forms.xml file in this case and for the on the fly querying of the dbpj we use javascript auto suggestions ui and ajax method for query and once the contact content is received from dbpedia we retrieve content from knowledge bases displayed using css and json so this is the configuration that we have implemented in the background this is the query sparkle query that we run and this uri is replaced by the uri of the particular concept and the data is fetched and here we are just interested in the english language abstract and english language broader term english language labeled uh, title like that so this is uh, all and uh, the, uh, the link data open open linked open data has high potential for libraries and like libraries have an important role to play in this uh, link data movement i end my talk with this uh, small quote and uh, that says that whole is often seen as more than the sum of parts so if you bring content from different places and make it available at a single place maybe it will be more than the individual parts that they constitute thank you thank you so much vineet uh, it looks like we have a question in q and a and please feel free to add questions to q and a or raise your hand if you'd like to speak uh, the question is, does the Sparkle query happen at the time the item is deposited into the repository or when an end user is searching or browsing the repository? Uh, no, Sparkle query is actually created in the, uh, on the fly and it is not stored, but it's, uh, it is actually written in a JavaScript file. So then we can follow two kinds of enrichment. One is that is on the fly enrichment. This prototype is using on the fly enrichment. It means when the page loads, the user tries uh, the uh, page queries the DBPDS server. The problem with this model is that if the DBPDS server for that moment is not functional, then there will be no uh, content available. So the another option is that we fetch all the data from DBPDS as a dump file and store it in a local uh, Ripple store. So that that problem will be resolved. I guess I answered the question. Thank you. I had a question. Oh, it looks like here, Jamie, when you click on the related terms provided by DBpedia, does it link to the DBpedia information or to records in the repository that have been tagged with this term? I actually had that same question. <laughs> Uh, sorry, uh, can you please repeat? Sure. When you click on the related terms provided by DBpedia, does it link to the DBpedia information or to the records in the repository that have been tagged with this term? Uh, yeah, uh, so it, it, uh, that is a question, good question, thank you. Uh, basically, it, uh, it, it is, uh, this queries the record in the institutional repository, not on DBpedia. So, Basically, it helps the user to suggest some some of the related terms, which were actually not present in the metadata of the local metadata of the institutional report. Thank you. And we have another question. Do you have any feedback from depositors or users on the enriched information? Are they finding it useful? Yeah, this... Uh, um, this part is actually still pending we have with us. We have not made any study regarding this, whether, uh, whether the users are finding it useful or not. That may be the next part of this that we, we go for a user survey or user-based 
studies to find out whether this feature helps them or not. So maybe after some time we will conduct this. Thank you. Do we have any final questions for Vineet? If you uh, think of anything, uh, we have our Slack channel, so you're welcome to add questions there and continue the discussion. Thank you so much, Vineet, for sharing your presentation with us. And I will turn things over Thank you. to you. Thank you. Um, I will turn things over to call. Dr. Stephen McCall is an associate professor of library and information studies. He teaches and conducts research in metadata, linked data, and scholarly um, communication topics in the School of Library and Information Studies at the University of Alabama. He earned a bachelor's degree from Rice University and a master's and PhD in information science from the University of North Texas. In his talk today, Dr. McCall will discuss his learning curve with linked data application development after implementing a wiki-based instance at the University of Alabama in summer 2017. The talk will center on his experiments with the link semantic indexing of images documenting American football game action by incorporating external statistical play-by-play -play data sets on a per game basis. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you, Hillary. Thank you, Dr. Kumar, and thank you, Winnie, for our contributions so far. It's been a very exciting day and a good conference. So I'm coming to you from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. You may have noticed my avatar for the conference is Sophie, my rescue dog, and she will inevitably make an appearance during my presentation, of course, by voice, uh, as there are workers in the neighborhood and she's always on guard. My students are very much used to her. And in fact, she's my uh, teaching assistant from off campus. My presentation, Data-Driven Semantic Digital Asset Management Indexing, Incorporating Statistical Play-by-Play -play Game Logs. And there's an asterisk here by indexing because uh, at the close, we'll be uh, doing some theoretical speculation on the question of what exactly we are doing. Uh, is it indexing or not? Um, and this comes from a, a long history of working uh, with um, sports images, specifically uh, in American football. Um, I have key contributors, uh, Huapu Lu, who was my graduate assistant, 2018-2019 academic year and we'll be starting our doctoral program in the fall and formally rejoining the semantic indexing research group. And Melissa Anderson, also my graduate assistant from this past academic year. Uh, Dr. Greg Bott and, uh, is, a, a I'm sorry, is a collaborator and Ken Yaddy, you'll meet virtually in a moment via the slides, is the director of the Paul W. Bryant Museum. And uh, special thanks to David McMillan, who's in the room also, as are my graduate assistants. Uh, David uh, worked with SLIS as technical support back when I first started, nearly when I first started in the late 90s at uh, the University of Alabama. Now he's executive director in the University of Alabama Office of Information Technology for Enterprise Development and Application Support. Uh, so his career has progressed nicely, but he's providing the technical support for um, for the Wikibase instance. And we'll be available later to answer questions, if any, about our integration of the automatic generation of info boxes uh, from Wikibase to MediaWiki uh, site pages. There is partial funding I would like to acknowledge from the Research Grants Committee at the University of Alabama for this project, which is becoming a very large uh, research project, again, as we'll talk about a little bit later. But we want to focus on the, the present, which is indexing uh, 2017 images from the Alabama Crimson Tide uh, football season. And uh, the challenge is what's happening in our images, especially those that we inherit or ingest or bring into our uh, our milieu for organizing. 
And um, this is um, a random Getty image that I selected because of its importance. And some might, some, especially younger fans, might say that this image is from the most famous play in Alabama football history. And, um, and obviously, we really can't tell that from the image. Um, and this is a long-standing challenge of historical images as well. They uh, don't tell the complete story necessarily, but there are these moments in time, the decisive moments in, uh, oftentimes. So we're going to talk about this image through the, um, uh, through the presentation today uh, in a way that trying to not only know what's going on for today's purposes, but what about 20 years from now? Um, so we have three identify three players in the um, these are the featured players in the cogniz of, uh, of uh, game logging. Two are identifiable by number, one is not, and uh, of course they're wearing the uniforms of their teams. And um, the uh, importance of twenty years from now might be the case where this player, and this might be the play he talks about to his children and grandchildren. And if they want to get documentation, can we retrieve it 20 years from now? So uh, obviously that's a part of the organizing is to think about future use. And not all players, this player will be a famous player with the Miami Dolphins. He'll be written about a lot, but this player may not be. And so we want to be concerned with uh, recording information about what's going on as, as best as possible. So we want to focus on indexing images that document game action and this was an interest of mine developing over a long period, really since about 2008. Uh, Ken Gaddy, as I mentioned, the director of the Paul W. Bryant Museum. Uh, Paul Bryant, also known as Bear Bryant, <clears throat> very famous Alabama football coach. <clears throat> and um, uh, his, uh, they do have, uh, thanks to his son, uh, support this museum and with this documentary, documentary collection of, of, of um, mainly Alabama football, but also other sports. And they have extensive historical and current multimedia content. And again, much of it unidentifiable other than for general game information. Uh, but the, the main question of the documentary collection is player images from media and fans. Uh, media, you know, whenever a player dies, for example, they come to the museum to get historical materials uh, to, to support um, a media a presentation, you know, television and things like that. And it's easy to, uh, to again, easier to recall historical documents of famous people. But fans who come in seeking images often seek images of their father or grandfather. And sometimes and oftentimes uh, those players were not famous players. So it's harder to find images of those individual players. And it's important for the fans because many times, if it's their father or grandfather, they're seeking this information because Bear Bryant uh, funded a scholarship to, to uh, help support the sons and daughters of his players through the, the rest of time. Uh, if they are, and grand, so it's important to document that, yes, my father, grandfather, great-grandfather was a player. So, so this is kind of the stress on the uh, documentary collection and its use. Um, so... Uh, but the, the ability to index individual images just not really possible for a variety of reasons. So over this long period of time, it occurred to me through analysis and from a research perspective that if we, if we could tie play-by-play -play data to images somehow, and I never really knew how to do that, but I knew it could address the issues that, that are at hand with the needs of this documentary collection. And indeed, the uh, the museum has play-by-play -play data sets, uh, digital and otherwise, and we'll talk about um, formats, but this shows you the kind of information a play-by-play -play data set has. This happens to be from a game in 1965, and, um, and it's a brief description, and the starting yard line, and the uh, down and distance, and the outcome. All right, so that's the kind of data play-by-play -play we're talking about. Now, uh, as we'll review in a moment, there's been a history of different um, uh, software that we've used to index images. And when Wikibase made its appearance in my life, which was after taking a summer 2018 workshop at Fiskey, uh, the great Daniel Meachin <laughs> providing a week-long workshop. And I owe Daniel a tremendous amount because 
for me, I have to work with software and um, in, in linked data. So this is the learning curve aspect. And when I got Wikibase and was able to get it downloaded and installed locally at the University of Alabama, it was just opened up all kinds of opportunities to roll up my sleeves because that's how I learn in addition to theory, it's practice and practice and theory to me are, are married, um, importantly. All right, so, uh, so there are new opportunities to address this issue as we'll talk about. So if we look at images, who are the players, what's the play result in statistical context, what comes next? Now those are all the desirable questions we want to ask, but the sort of Damocles is efficiency. All right, can we do it efficiently? And of course, image by image indexing, especially with the onslaught of born digital images from digital cameras, uh, just not possible. So, so efficiency is part of the research. So it's also part of my teaching. Uh, and so really with Ken providing me with a set of images for my students to uh, my advanced students in a metadata course. So this is a course post intro course. So organization of information and then a metadata course, which involved a near semester long indexing project with this, with a set of historical black and white images from games and uh, color uh, images from a more, more recent game. And the software we're, and we were using was the, um, the, you know, the conventional item by item indexing software, content DM, Omeka, Omeka S. And that would look like this, an image plus a metadata record, right? So here's a, one of the color images uh, from a, the 20, a 2010 game and the students would index the image based on an indexing set of guidelines that they developed based on Dublin Core. They developed application profile and uh, worked with developing guidelines and then indexed some images. So that was a nice project. Um, uh, over about a 10 year period with these with sets of images provided by the museum in their documentary collection. Uh, again, uh, the play by play I, uh, data incorporating uh, was just not possible within this software context of content DM Omeka or Omeka, Omeka S. But I always would encourage my students to think about what we might be able to do with the proper software environments. And then Wikibase shows up, as I mentioned, uh, and it really just changed everything, but it gave, gave us a chance to think about not a, an image database, but a play database, which we'll talk about. And that's the, kind of the shift in thinking for efficiency purposes that I want to talk about as, with the asterisk uh, a little bit later. Uh, so now I'm able to have a linked data course centered on uh, Wik, uh, Wikibase and Wikidata, of course, a good example of, uh, of extensive linked data application, but also the, the development of a linked data application. All right, so distilling the problem sets, we've got a set of problems. What's going on? Who are the identifiable and unidentifiable players? Uh, I'm not pr promising that all this is possible even yet. We're still looking into it, but we've got new opportunities with Wikibase. The logical ordering problem, uh, what's happening before and afterward, efficiency problem. And our basic approach is to index each play of a football game using external statistical play-by-play -play data sets. All right, and of course we have to include uh, the at scale question when we formalize our central question. So re to research this question and to design an eventual solution meant that we had to locate the context, transform the context, and then link images to the context. So this is what uh, the, uh, lo the uh, extract, transform, and uh, uplift or upload uh, data uh, process, which we'll talk about. That's the data pipeline. Um, and there are three material states of play-by-play -play data. Uh, I pointed out a minute ago a category two game, paper-based typewritten play-by-play -play data set. But we're focusing today on uh, born digital data sets, uh, now JSON formatted available, which we can work with uh, that helps us to work at scale. We'll talk a little bit about typewritten and a little bit about uh, the third category games, but our main focus today is on category one games and the pipeline that we generated to produce um, RDF data, triples from the play-by-play -play data. So analyzing our situation, we're event driven, but events of type sport, of type football. So uh, 
this, as I mentioned, the Bryant, Paul W. Bryant Museum has many other sports, uh, but we start with football and we eventually, in theory, want to drive up to event uh, concepts in indexing or organizing. Uh, that's a longer term question, but one that's on the horizon. And, um, uh, and there's a lot of work around events and semantic uh, web and linked data. So, so we do fit into a, a research program there. So when we look at football from a sport event perspective, it's got four quarters plus extra time as needed. Uh, quarters consists of plays and the play is the base unit for data collection. And each play is, is a definite non-overlapping start and stop time. So there's no overlap, which is good for organizing purposes if we are or tying uh, data and organizing to a, an event slice. And of course, during each play, there's definite players on the field, definite statistical outcomes. So the play becomes our unit of analysis. Uh, and of course, that's the context for logging the game. So how does this data, play-by-play -play data get created? Well, football games and many, indeed, all sporting events are logged by humans to generate play-by-play -play data sets. And that has a tremendous benefit of high quality, though not perfect quality, but high quality play-by-play uh, -play data sets. So our thesis is that, see, that these data sets can provide a strong baseline for indexing images based on the statistical description and participating players in a play. Usually participating players are those in the image because they're participating in the play. But keep in mind, we're also interested in players on the field uh, especially in the fourth quarter when the scrubs are in, getting the, maybe their only appearance of the season, because that player with one play could be as important as a famous player to someone 20 years from now or 30 or 100 years from now. That's a kind of a prosopographical approach um, with prosopography. So in our modeling, we look at uh, key classes and their relationships. We start down here with the play as the base unit and it's contextualized as a series of plays are part of a drive drives are part of games games are part of seasons and uh, we have to account for this um, in our uh, in our ontology and um, as we derive our uh, data pipeline uh, and note that only the season class has an existing wiki data item page that's going to play a role in uh, in our conclusions about using Wikibase, Wikibase currently optimized obviously for Wikidata, we're pressing uh, you know, item pages for plays. And in the 2017 season, there were some 3000 plays. So each has an item page um, and, they're, and they're related to drives, games, and seasons. Now you'll note that we don't use quarters here. So the game logically divided into quarters, going back, oops going back here, because, uh, uh, because a drive can overlap quarters. So the time basis is not what we want. It's the statistical gathering basis plays gathered in the drives, gathered in the games. And this, these relationships also drive our Sparkle query optimization if people are looking for plays from a drive or plays from a game or plays from a season. So we incorporate this um, the key ontology classes and their relationships in Sparkle queries. Uh, so here we have the non-overlapping time segments uh, with instances with uh, uh, followed by um, properties. So these P numbers obviously aren't P numbers from Wikidata, they're from our Wikibase instance, which we'll be showing in a minute. So Wikibase is the structured repository. Um, as you know, a software provided by the Wikimedia Foundation and all of its wonderful uh, developers and supporters. And it, of course, drives the Wikidata service and has been made generously available, as has MediaWiki software, as a free download. Uh, although, <laughs> as David will attest, and many of you know, uh, a Wikibase download is no simple feat. It takes quite a bit of, of managing uh, on the back end. So again, thank you to uh, my colleague, David McMillan, for that support. Uh, so with fall 2018 academic year, and my metadata courses are in the spring, so in the 2019, and uh, we were able to do the first metadata course with, um, with 
uh, with wiki wiki based software instead of the previous versions of software. All right, so um, we were able to capture the 2017 football season uh, on an item pa item page. Sorry, I'm going to have to come up here. There we go. Wake up the wiki base. <laughs> okay, so we've got the an item page. Uh, well, this is the the media wiki page, the uh, item page for for the season. Right, this is an instance of an American football team season, and um, and part and it has parts that are each game and the game of interest for us is the georgia game and the game is made up of drives and the image of interest is in the last drive which is made up of of uh, plays go back here okay and uh, of course uh, we'll show some sparkle queries at the end about what can be done and these are uh, enable us to do precision uh, querying of play database. And then the info box techniques, which we'll show in a minute. Uh, the key thing is the uh, data pipeline, processing the JSON data, uh, formatted data into RDF triples. I've come to learn recently that this is semantic uplift, right? Or ET, uh, ETU, or extract, transform upload. So I'm learning, this is the learning curve of someone who's not technologically sophisticated. I have people who, get, who help me out with that. Uh, but anyway, to publish data, uh, uh, to uplift data as RDF triples is basically what we're doing. Um, so our original Wikibase obviously is empty. Um, and so we had to work with that. This is Hoapulu, my uh, graduate assistant from 2017 the 2018 2019 academic year we just sat there and said what are we going to do so we just started filling it with the data and of course the batch uploading is important um but our task was eventually to be able to take uh, the json encoded 2017 uh so this fellow who runs this google drive and this is now an api so he doesn't provide data this way anymore but I just want to quickly show you what the json formatted data looks like for a game so i'm going to um, just get a random game. This happens to be from North Texas. Uh, so this is what a, the play-by-play -play data looks like in JSON. Now we got to get this data is RDF in Wikibase using quick statements upload tool and a quick statements demands uh, CSV, right? Um, the, so we've got to get go through a spreadsheet to upload. All right, so uh, just shows a little bit what we did. We have our missing P's and Q's, just like Wikidata does. Uh, some of our proper, our first properties now starts at P6 because we used up P1 through P5 in our trial and error period. Um, so, so we needed to, to again go from this into our example we showed a minute ago. Uh, from this to this and actually this is a particular drive with its property value pairs so going from json data to this data and if we look at our properties list that we developed again you'll see the missing p's that uh, we had to sacrifice to the trial and error learning early in the Wikibase period that would be fall of 2018. And uh, using a Python scripting to map uh, values to Q numbers for our, uh, for our um, uh, entities, plays and play types and things like that. So I'm not going a lot into the specifics of the data model uh, for time purposes, Mainly, this is about the use of the software in this presentation. So when we go, um, we can take a, um, okay, we can go from our um, JSON file. The first thing we discovered was a JSON to CSV because we needed to head uh, towards uh, quick statements upload, which is uh, CSV. So here's the downloaded uh, JSON file for the play-by-play -play data sets for the Georgia Alabama championship game in 2017. This tool with just a click 
will take this data from JSON into spreadsheets. And uh, from here, we were able to follow our, we developed wrangling instructions. This data set is intended for the display on the web of a game, play by play. So there's a lot of stuff in here we don't need. We came to find out. And um, so uh, if we come over uh, to this point and delete columns. This is our play by play data as provided. Uh, uh, we've got our properties and our uh, rows represent plays. So this data needed to be transformed. So we developed multi-page detailed uh, data pipeline by hand. And then we were able to, using our Python script, um, we're able to, to um, work with uh, making more efficient key parts of the data transforma transformation process. And this is just a quick view of what the quick statements tool looks like for batch upload to Wikibase. Okay. Um, Alrighty. And then, as I mentioned, just very briefly, from the non JSON formatted, this is where my uh, this past academic year with my other graduate assistant, Melissa Anderson, taking the lead in how we could recover data from historical record that we're presenting on this at the Library of Congress if, when it gets rescheduled on their collections as data. Um, so the, the uh, data formats on paper also transform and can be used. Uh, and here's a particular play. Uh, that comes from a, a game in 1992. And of course, it looks the same uh, in terms of the other, uh, uh, in terms of the 2017 year with the property value pairs representing st statistical aspects of this particular play. And then 61 games uh, were data recovered from newspaper accounts. So there'll be more information on that as we write that up in the future. Let me go back to, because our, our primary focus is on um, uh, transforming the JSON formats. All right, so our results, we've got, uh, as I mentioned, over 3,000 plays from the 2017 season, each with their own item page. And um, we're now able to identify images based on timestamps. So we have a, a donated set of images from Alabama athletics and based on the timestamp of this particular image, which is uh, at basically at 638 on the game day, part of the um, uh, metadata provided, let me go back to it, part of the metadata provided, so that was metadata from the camera. And this is that play, okay, that particular play. Here's the image. And uh, if we go to the Wikibase item page, we do record the wall clock time. Let me do a search. Yep. And it matches the uh, right, the wall clock display 638. So we had a match from the camera timestamp to this. So we were able basically to automatically identify that image based on the timestamp. And then we know just by matching the timestamp uh, that that particular image occurred in a particular play, even though it's not very clear just from the image. And of course, we can also tie to, um, in this case, the YouTube clips. So we get the multimedia aspect side by side of this particular play. So right here is where the image was taken from a different angle, so. All right, and um, again, I wanna emphasize uh, the connecting, this is a MediaWiki site page for the play, which connects to the item page. And this is the play-by-play -play data, the property value pairs from the spreadsheet uploaded as triples. And um, which allows us to do the matching, allows us to do Sparkle queries, 
and but I want to talk briefly uh, and, and just to show you uh, that um, the info box provides the human uh, view of the data drawn from the item page. And that's what we're going to talk about in a second, how we generated that. But there are a bunch of queries here. I don't need to go through all of them because um, they're basically the same principle, precision searching. And uh, if we want all rushing touchdowns that went for over 50 yards from the 2017 season, then uh, we can do that kind of precision querying based on the um, situation, right? So, uh, so if you, I've given you in the, you can download the PPT slides and you can, if you want to play around with these, uh, you can go right to the, um, uh, to that part of the PPT slides. And I want to leave a little bit of time for this part because this is probably the most interesting thing we were able to do. And I wasn't able to do it without David McMillan's assistance. So we have to have a info box template and these templates are called, all right. So if I go to this particular play into the uh, view source, uh, the template is called right here. Okay. So this temp, this, so when this page, when this page loads, then this data is drawn directly from our Wikibase instance by virtue of the Lua programming that David McMillan set up with the Infobox template here. So, um, so plays, drives, games have templates and they draw data as need be. So our particular, uh, game was the Georgia championship game. And um, we're going to, right? So again, this page is automatically uh, created with the info box and the data corresponding to the game. And the drives have their own data because uh, of their own templates as well. Uh, so this is what, again, it looks what a media wiki page drawing from an item page for a drive. And then the, to close our particular play of interest, this particular play is the play that occurs after the one I showed you. So the one we looked at before was, as I said, the most famous play was, him, was the quarterback getting sacked because it set up the second most famous play, which was the touchdown pass, uh, which led to the championship so, so knowing a context around is important. So this is uh, the play that happened after the sack. So this was the championship winning play. So it was made more dramatic by the fact that the quarterback was sacked in the play before. So, all right, so that's uh, basically our presentation. Um, uh, there's some key takeaways. Um, automatically generating info boxes are really crucial uh, for us to do this level of work. Uh, Wikibase doesn't currently allow for full encoding of time. So the point in time data type doesn't allow us to, uh, to uh, get the seconds <laughs> involved yet. It's coming down the pike. So we have uh, a, a, um, a textual data type for our wall clock data. Uh, we can still search for it, but, uh, and then we're looking for federating Wikibases in the future because different institutions can organize their own football sports assets and searching across collections remains important, a goal. Um, so our future work is integrating other sources of data. Uh, the play-by-play -play data, as I mentioned, baseline data. Um, we have a, an agreement now with a professor of computer engineering who does digital image processing or he can detect player numbers in game video. But we want a more complete collection, not just the featured players, but all participating players if possible in each play and uh, digital image processing of game video, which is widely available on YouTube, especially in the modern game. We wanna fully automate our semantic lift, our data processing pipeline, and that will involve moving our attention over to the API that our data provider has created in the last uh, an external data provider of the play-by-play -play data. And then ontology engineering, that's our new buzzword for scaling, designing for scale. So this is a pilot project of what we were doing. 
All right, so this just gives you a little bit of our uh, thinking about really are we indexing here? And this is more speculation. Are we really indexing images? Well, we're not giving uh, this metadata to individual images. We're basically arranging the images. So part of the work we're doing also is modeling texts in library collections. And in collections, we talk about an arrangement of collections, you know, usually with a, with a classification scheme. So are we semantically arranging these images, not indexing them? Though these are the, some of the musings theoretical. They're not possible for me until I get my hands dirty in the software and, and in the indexing process. So, uh, and then the concept of a philology graph right if we're dealing with entities in the world um you know this that's really speculative and i don't want i don't have the time to go into it. it's what we're thinking about a knowledge graph complement so um and it all derives from complementing bibliographic um modeling in linked data with what we do in the stacks arranging to organize so we catalog and we arrange when we organize in libraries so we're more with the second half of arranging stuff. <laughs> so that's kind of what, how I want to close. So um, I, I invite questions, especially for those of you who want to take advantage of David McMillan's presence. He was the one who engineered the, implemented the Infobox auto populating. But thank you very much. Thank you so much, Stephen. And I've just added David as a panelist, so he should be able to um, speak if. Uh, he needs to answer a question. And we do Thank have you. quite a few questions. Um, so let's see. One I believe you answered part of uh, during the talk, but it was for an idea of scale about how many plays are there in a game. And then I think you had said 3,000 plays per season. Correct. Okay. So anywhere from about 100 to 140 plays per game. So, so I guess, yeah, three, about 2,000 games. Uh, Depends on the number of games, uh, obviously. We had 15 games, so yeah, two to 3,000. I neglected to get the exact number I meant to, but so. And how many images of a given game does the university typically capture and collect? Well, that's um, just a general question about uh, those who are paid to document games with uh, digital cameras. They, it's therefore much more in the way of, con of amount of content because of digital cameras, but the benefit of hopefully a well-programmed uh, EXIF metadata with setting the time clock in the cameras. So the benefit of, of digital cameras and the potential problems of more images than on film cameras is addressed com completely by having the uh, timestamps that we can attach so we like to organize the game and attach the images with timestamps. So it becomes less of a problem workflow wise if everyone has their uh, time, their clocks set correctly in their cameras. Thank you. And we have another question. Can you tell us more about your <clears throat> data ingest and property creation process? Mm -hmm. Which Python mm -hmm. libraries did you find most useful and what were the deleted properties that you had created <laughs> first? Yeah, we we were faced with the empty wiki base. And um, so the only thing we could really do in the learning curve was what I call a, ver a variation of literary warrant. Uh, we needed to develop properties as needed based on what the data set was telling us. And so we had that really good data set. Uh, and so we climbed a whole bunch of conceptual uh, milestones, including recognizing the tabular data structure and its direct mapping to RDF triples. Now we couldn't state it that way in 2017 fall, 2018 in the fall, but we recognized, oh my gosh, yes, the, the, the headers of the, uh, once we transformed the data into spreadsheet, the headers became our, our properties and the rows became our entities. Uh, so it was a, a delightful period of time working with WAPU over that first academic year, just understanding, okay, this is linked data, all right? This is what they mean by it. So um, it really became a, uh, a literary warrant kind of uh, thing. So it's hard to know, of course, what the properties we missed on. Um, uh, and of course, the ontologizing of the property relationships and the class relationships that has all come lately as well. So it was a seat of the pants thing. So and we're going to redo the whole thing. Uh, and um, uh, with, again, with an ontology engineering perspective going forward, 
two years into it. Thank you. Can you tell us, um, oh, it looks like you're storing videos in YouTube. Are, they, are the images stored elsewhere on the web or in your media wiki site? No, they are linked. Uh, David came up with a way to, uh, uh, that allows for linking to YouTube and we're able to basically have that as a column in our spreadsheet. Uh, the time uh, issue, the t you know, the being able to link within it is, is um, something we have to look at automating a little bit better. We were able to selectively link to uh, YouTube clips at the point of the, of the game, just for demonstration purposes. Uh, but that's part of the digital image processing approach um, is they'll be able to tie us because of their algorithmic approach to digital image processing when, you know, when uh, scenes shift or, you know, the markers of play starts, right? So we'll be able to scale up linking to YouTube at points. Uh, so right now that's where we are, um, just in demonstration mode, not having to host the videos. Thank you. And how did you match image timestamps to plays based on the single wall clock time rather than a time range for each play? So that, I mean, it's a couple of ways to do that. I mean, the sparkle queries could, can be done, but you're right, that is a point in time issue. So you have to match them up exactly. But so it's a matter at this stage of just uh, getting close to it or even uh, cheating and looking at the spreadsheet times and not seeing what had happened. Uh, but that's something that comes in scaling up if we get funding for a scale up to, to make uh, the querying part more, uh, uh, you know, more readily accomplished at scale. So we're here we're in demo mode, so we're able to cheat a little bit. But so, but so we can show in principle that the timestamps will connect us. But there is also data quality problems in the data set um, as well. They don't always keep the right time. So, you know, there's a lot around, um, in fact, that's the title of our paper uh, coming out of this, uh, taking timestamps seriously, <laughs> uh, because there are issues on both sides of the timestamp um, concept. But going forward, that's the solution for scaling up in the sports domain when you have documentation that's digital at capture and images that are digital at capture. And what hardware is used for your Wikibase instance? Uh, David? Uh, right now we're just using um, basically just uh, some VMware um, virtual servers. So I think right now we're running pretty much everything under one virtual server, but um, can easily scale that out if we need to split some of those components to um, different virtual servers. Thanks, David. Um, another question, what's in a philology graph um, that went by quickly and I'm not sure yes. I grasped your de de definition of it. Yes, so that, that's a great question. That, and that's where part of what we're doing right now to generalize this work where uh, you know, the opportunity to bring content into a library uh, is I, in the long term, that's really important for private re reading reasons, for long term preservation across civilization demise uh, that we need to get into a, a way to to have content in geographically distributed and of course right now everything's going into one place basically because and then linking to it uh, so the idea uh, uh, is we've got to think about bringing stuff into the library and you know and our texts into the library so the idea is what are we going to do bringing the texts into the libraries so what, um, so it's really, I can't really go completely into it. Just, uh, I meant to say, uh, keep tuned to this bat channel. <laughs> We're, you know, we want to extend our work and think about organizing parts of things, right? And I come from a medical uh, background, health background. And, um, and so, yeah, again, uh, it's hard to really go into in great detail, but sections of books update at different rates, right? and especially in medicine. So if we are keeping track at the um, segment level, and a segment by definition is any grouping of stuff with a heading, right? So grouping of text would be a subsection of a book, for example, or a play with a description, the segments. 
and uh, each segment has its own philological history when it's written, when it's published, when it's uh, when it is um, consumed, uh, you know, with um, in terms of um, uh, reader impacts. So we need to have a more supple way of organizing our text more granularly. That's the opportunity now, whether it scales and other issues like that. So it's um, so we're providing a way to hopefully, in theory, to be able to account for um, the way people produce philologically. And some people, and some textual scholars recreate um, the, and, and studying uh, genetic criticism, how a text is created. And that's important for some users. We need to be able to account for that. So, so it's, uh, it's getting, it's trying to complement the knowledge graph concept with what exactly we need to be able to do to maintain with the theoretical possibilities afforded linked data and not thinking bibliographically, right, in terms of a book being the container because textual segments want to be freed of that, especially if they are updating at their own pace or if they're accountable to genetic criticism in different uh, ways. So. Uh, so it's it's um, something to look for. I wanted to get that term out there and document it as well. So I thought I'd do that at the end. Thanks for that explanation. There's a follow-up comment. Interesting. Looking forward to hearing more as your work. The, and the best way to really think about it is complementing bibliographic um, link data and bibliographic, you know, cataloging work. A lot of people are working on link data in that context. We're looking kind of when the texts come in, how can they be arranged? It's kind of going to the stacks and seeing 16 editions of a book right there in the stacks. So you can go back in time for that text, right? So, so it's best thinking about it in the, in the arrangement organizing rather than the cataloging organizing because plenty of people are concerned about cataloging and its future in link data. Thank you. When you link to the YouTube video, does the frame select a display or just the representative thumbnail provided by YouTube? Yeah, so we're able to link directly to the point in the game that we want to show, right? So it's a, it's a frame. So that, um, if you right click at a point in a YouTube video, it gives you the, uh, the link to that point, which is a frame based, then that's a starting time when we, when we click. So, and then we give it an ending time as well. Um, so that is fairly straightforward. So this link here goes, uh, is programmed to go to a point in time and end when the play is over. Cause, cause if you right click, you can copy URL at current time which shows the frame that it starts. Okay. Yes, thanks. So it stopped at this point in time. Okay. And um, do you mind saying the name again of the person working on identifying the numbers of players from the video? Yes, that uh, he wasn't acknowledged. Uh, he, uh, cause he's not yet officially a part of the team. Um, but and we're starting with he and the students uh, in a couple of weeks. I do have them uh, listed on my annual report. Let's see, I quickly, I'm just looking for. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, Dr. Yugan. Yeah. Thank you. Um, if Wikibase were to fully encode for time, might the loggers enter their data directly in Wikibase using a Cradle form, for example? Yeah, that um, <laughs> requires some integration with the logging software itself. Uh, yeah, over the long run, anything is possible. And this is a great question because it talks about the importance of getting, of continuing to build out our infrastructure and libraries for such integration capabilities because we need to get as close to the action literally as possible. And I've talked about a health background and that was my earlier research about getting sets of readable resources to the point of patient care so someone can read pinpointed 
information about a particular case? It's, that's a great question because Sparkle being a protocol will allow for that integration um, both in capturing data but also in pinpointing the uh, retrieval based on uh, much more precisionable metadata, the linked data. So yes, so that definitely is something we need to, you know, as a workforce, as a, a force <laughs> in um, society to, to enable our cross-publisher collections be integrated at all kinds of uh, context, both at use and at capture. So that's on the list. And looks like our last question. Um, might you put this information into Wikidata rather than a local wiki base for potential mm -hmm. of adding more to Infobox, like info about players mm -hmm. with their own Wikidata mm -hmm. item or Wikipedia mm -hmm. article? Yeah, so um, originally being able to, you know, have more flexibility to play around uh, it, with the wiki base was important. Um, uh, also, not being able to tie the we didn't know the importance of the seconds at the originally, uh, or lack of it. It turned out not to be a problem. Uh, but the I, uh, you know, it's definitely you know anything is possible. So, so we're trying to to it's the kind of the learning issue you pointed out in the introduction. Uh, thank you for doing that. Uh, it's very important. So whatever is possible in the future. But part of this was a learning curve, and part of it too is to. Uh, take advantage of a federation of wiki bases, which is one of the principal design formats of the uh, ahead for wiki bases software and allowing localized wiki bases to be um, uh, to be labeled you know be tra uh, labeled with local library uh, you know credits if you will uh, and a lot of the assets are not going to be publicly web available either but of course the data is what he's talking about or he or she is talking about uh, what they're talking about there um, so there's lots of opportunities and I even thinking about how to strategically supply data to wikidata and even to wikipedia because uh, the libraries are managing their neck of the woods um, as efficiently as effectively as, as possible in the wiki base and then also keeping the uh, wiki data up to date in certain future informational contexts. So there are lots of possibilities. Thank you. And it looks like we've got a comment in the chat from Laura. Great learning data project. Impressive even for a non-football fanatic. I imagine there are some Crimson Tide fans and alumni that would get into this. And she, and she says, as a UGA alumna, though, I want to oh, see I'm Herschel sorry. Walker plays. <laughs> no, they, the, the opportunities are uh, tremendous out there. And um, scaling is an issue, right? So, and then also uh, data recovery. Uh, we've just some exciting opportunities with uh, computational approaches to extracting data. Um, I read even in games when there are no formal data sets. If you go back to the newspaper accounts, you'd be amazed. We documented uh, two thirds of plays can be recovered. Uh, and that would be a tremendous um, uh, smart or computational uh, challenge to extract data from text uh, when it's play by play oriented, oriented. So I actually did that by hand just to demonstrate the amount of data that is available latent data in the historical record. So rebuilding history, we want to reorganize, you know, a lot of that reorganizing our historical artifacts under a linked data regime, uh, that being the optimal distributed sharing environment. Um, and uh, the uplift process, the ETL process, uh, ETL, yes, process is crucial in, all, in that. So um, that's our future immediate future. Thank you so much. This was a really excellent presentation and a great demonstration of Wikibase. So thank you, Dr. Kumar and Dr. McCall for this excellent final session of our um, digital collection track. 
Uh, the session has been recorded, so the recording will be made available as soon as we can. And you're welcome to continue the discussion in our Slack channel, the Digital Collection Track channel in the LD4 Slack space. And um, join us later today for some more sessions in our Wikidata track. So thank you all so much for joining us and have a great rest of your day or evening.